Hey, welcome to my channel. All right, so hopefully that intro got your attention, but in this video, I will literally be showing you how to make an invisibility shield. Now there was a video that went viral on the internet a while back, something exactly like this. Now the actual shield was made by a Canadian company and I saw that video and it absolutely blew me away. I was fascinated from the second I saw it and uh, from then on I decided to start doing my research and figure out how I can build my own. With some improvements of course. So I did my research, I figured out what I needed to learn and this is the result. Now I'm quite pleased with it and I hope you are too. I can't actually show you the video for copyright reasons but I would encourage you to do some searching around for it just so I can prove mine's better. But anyway, <laughs> this is just made out of some plain old things that you can find on the internet relatively easily. Is it cheap? Not really. You're looking at about $130 here, but I would say it was totally worth it. So first I'll be going over how exactly it works, all the little science and nuance stuff that I'm underqualified to share with you. And then I'll be going into the actual construction. This is a no gimmicks, no camera trick, no joke, invisibility shield. Or more of a distortion shield, if you will, but you'll see the science on it in a little bit. So anyway, this is something that I don't think has ever been done before by anybody independently on YouTube. So if you really enjoy it, then please let me know. I'm really trying to do some original and creative content on my channel that you have never seen before. So anyway, that's enough talking, let's get to the build. Okay, that was lame. So if you want to build your own invisibility shield, this is what you'll need. A riot shield, 12 by 24 sheet of laxam, and the heart and functionality of the whole project, lenticular sheets. That's right guys, the secret to this entire project is lenticular sheets, otherwise known as Ludor's lenses or Fresnel lenses, depending on which side of the internet you go to. Before we get to the actual build, let me explain a little bit about how these things work. Coming to help, Jimmy? So in this channel's fashion, Start with the diagram, shall we? This will give us a good visual representation of the working principles of our lenticular sheets and the invisibility shield. So first, the human eye. This is the observer. This is the person on the other side of the shield. So we all know how human eyes work. Human eyes take in light from the surroundings, turned into a signal that your brain interprets as an image. This is why in this example, you can see the light rays are traveling in this direction from the objects behind our target, Mr. Joe here, through the lenticular sheet and into the eye. Okay, so now I wanna make sure that we have an understanding of the word invisibility. Is this really invisibility? Well, you saw the results. It's not really invisibility, it's the illusion of invisibility. Invisibility is the inability of something to be seen. So there's several ways we can go about this. There are different sort of types of invisibility that exist. I'll be going over those just so we can set expectations and get a better understanding of what we're dealing with. So invisibility can really exist in three forms. First one is the most simple, of course. If you have a material that has the ability for light to pass straight through it and into the eye, so you have a clear image of what's behind, that object is technically invisible. The second type of invisibility is something that we can look to nature for. An octopus has the ability to change its skin color and texture to imitate whatever is behind it. So we do have some examples like that out in the world today. There are certain cloaks with projectors and cameras to simply take the image behind that object and then project it onto the front. So what you're seeing is technically an unobstructed view of the plane behind that person. And here's why that's not really that great. It's perspective based, meaning that if I had a background behind Mr. Joe here, Mr. Joe was standing here with an image on him that imitated exactly what was behind him while I was standing right here at this angle, as soon as I moved, the image on him wouldn't change, but the image that I should be seeing because of my perspective would change. So I would be looking at whatever's over here instead of whatever's right behind him here. And now onto the third type of invisibility, which is bending light rays around an object. This is probably the most likely way that we're gonna achieve invisibility at any point in the future. So basically we'd have our target, we'd have the background behind him, and we'd have you, the observer. Basically we would need a way to capture the light coming towards him and then bend it around at an arc, bring it around to the front, and then project it in the exact same trajectory that it was coming for you to begin with. Now that's obviously very difficult and something that we haven't quite mastered yet. So how does that work in our case? This is a lenticular lens, not unlike what we have, bent in a curve, not unlike the curve that will exist once we mount it to our riot shield. Now obviously what I have drawn there doesn't look an awful lot like this, but let me explain. 
Basically, this is a cross-cut view of the material. The lenticules, which are each one of these individual lenses, runs a complete length of the material. Depending on the material that you get, it can either run up and down or side to side, whatever. Or the ridges can run around in circles. I mean, it just depends on the lens and what it's designed to do. So these lenses are actually the same thing they use in 3D imagery. You know, those hologram images like the bookmarks used to have, where if you change perspective, it'll change from one image to another. Or if you're in a haunted house and you walk by a picture, you look back, it changes. That's what these are used for. So basically, I have somewhat of a diagram here explaining exactly how the light rays interact with the material to make an object appear invisible. So these individual lenticules refract incoming light and then project it at a different direction. That law of refraction is known as Snell's law. I would encourage you to look into it if you have any more deeper questions that I didn't answer. This is a pretty light explanation, but I just wanna make sure we all understand the principles so we can appreciate and understand the final product. So essentially what's happening is, our eye is not getting any light reflected from Mr. Joe, the target. Instead, that light would be refracted off in a different direction away from the eye. So what you're seeing is essentially either side of an image spliced together with a dead zone in the middle. And that is where we would hide our person. Yes, Jimmy, thank you, very, very, very helpful. So this sort of does two things. It does that, and it also, in the most simple terms I could think of, is it removes one axis of light, whether it be up or down or left or right, depending on which way you have this oriented. You can see this off to the side here as I play with this lenticular lens in front of these wrenches and that hammer. Now this is the principle we'll be using. Since we're standing behind it, these lenticules will be oriented in a straight up and down direction, and so that is the axis that will be removed. I can demonstrate this in a pretty simple manner by removing our image here. And now you can see what I mean. The hammer handle and the screwdrivers completely disappear, and also you notice that the holes on my pegboard seem to be elongated. Now the dead zone in the middle is obviously present even when the material is flat, but it's accentuated when we bend the material. Now this is sort of a brief explanation, but if you're interested to learn more about this, I would encourage you to check out Nighthawk and Light's video on Ludor's lenses. I'll provide a link in the description below for you to check it out. Okay, so now that I think we're all caught up and hopefully you have an understanding of exactly how these work and what these are, we're gonna need something a little bigger. So these sheets actually come in different types and they're quantified by a measurement called LPI or lenticules per inch. As I stated before, each one of these is a lenticule and however many there are per inch is the number. Surprise, surprise. So the viral video of the shield on the internet used a 60 LPI lenticular sheet. Now, these are 100 LPI lenticular sheets. The higher the LPI, the higher the definition of the image behind the person, if that makes sense. So in theory, this will be a much clearer and more convincing image than the viral video that you may have seen. So it's a little bit of an upgrade. Now, I couldn't buy sheets that were the full size of my 24 by 36 inch shield. So what I did instead is I bought 24 by 13 inch sheets. And I'll be placing three of them running side by side all the way up and of course the lenticules will be oriented in an up and around direction to hide my body which will be of course straight up and down behind it. All right we got our sheets now we need something to mount it to and that is where this comes in. Did you know you can buy riot shields at Walmart? Because uh, apparently you can and they're pretty reasonably priced. I'll put a link to this one down in the description in case you want to check it out. So this bag just contains the handles and the screws to attach it, and we're not gonna be needing that for this build, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. This is exactly why I wanted to make sure that you have a padded surface to put it on, or at least something that's protected. So that way I can set this here and have confidence that I'm not gonna damage it. These have a foam liner for your arm to go against, so that would be something like, something like this, and of course, handle would be here, and that would pad your arm against impacts when using this as a self-protection device. Now we're not gonna need this, we're not gonna be using any of this, because obviously, as you probably noticed from my earlier experiments, this only works when you're at somewhat of a distance. You'll notice that now you can pretty much clearly see that my hand is behind it. So that would not do us any good if this was on the shield with this there. So that whole thing has to go. Okay, now, since we'll have something laid over the surface of this polycarbonate and we won't be able to clean it, we need to make sure it's as clean as possible before blocking it off. Okay, now we're gonna give this a moment to dry, just to make sure there's no residue left behind. 
for adhesive to be obscured by. Now for an adhesive, obviously you want something that's going to be as clear and as strong as possible, and also on its instructions says that it can bond to our desired materials. So this is the glue that I went with. This is Loctite go-to glue, it's all purpose, and the reason why I went with it is because, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it says that it's crystal clear, and I've done some experimenting with it, and I found that to be true. So you want something that's basically as close to invisible as you can get. These things are so much fun to play with. <laughs> They're so weird. Okay, so we're going to want to clean the back sides or the smooth sides of our lenticular sheets just the same as we cleaned our polycarbonate shield for the same reasons. It seems really weird just casually talking about how to build an invisibility shield. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Oh, you know, the usual. All right, next we're going to go over everything with dry microfiber just to make sure that as much as uh, we can get off is off. When you're gluing on your lenticular lenses, absolutely make sure... Oh, hey, it's my reflection. Absolutely sure that the ridged portions are facing outwards because if you bridge the ridges with glue or any sort of other clear liquid, it'll completely change the way that the lenticules behave with light and it's just not going to work. So keep that in mind. A couple more things you're going to need is a buttload of clothespins just to make sure that everything is pressed down because you want the glue along the edge to be completely uniform as you can see. And just in case anything goes wrong, you're going to want some alcohol. You know what I mean. Make sure no glue gets on that lenticular surface because it'll have the same effect as what I mentioned earlier where it'll bridge the gap between the lenticules and you won't have that refraction effect that we're looking for. You can see the way that glue really spreads out and evens out. Make sure there's no air bubbles in it because that'll be an obvious blemish in the final product. So here's a more visual example. Obviously you want the glue to go all the way out to the outer edge because we're going to trim that off as soon as we're done. Okay, so this is drying and I'm going to answer a question that I'm pretty sure some of you have and that is if it looks so much better, you get a better angle, it looks so much better and clear where the adhesive is, why don't you just put adhesive over the entire shield and then stick the sheets to it? Well, that is ideal. I tried it. And this <laughs> was the result. I know, I even impressed myself with how badly I messed that up. It is impossible to get all of the air bubbles out of the adhesive between the surfaces. Absolutely impossible. I tried it and I failed. So do yourself a favor, just glue around the edges like I did, or if you can find one solid sheet and you're really, really magically good with adhesive, or if you have a special kind in mind that you know would work, in that case, you could go with a, a one sheet, one glue, one shield type thing, but it's just not reasonable in my scenario. Trust me, I tried. Also, one more thing. This shield is going to have some flex to it, and that's another reason why I don't think any kind of cyanoacrylate super glue would work. It's very rigid and brittle when it's dry, and this has some flex and some movement to it, so it'll adhere these sheets down, but it's not going to turn rock hard. All right, guys, welcome back. So I've left this dry for over 24 hours. The glue is all nice and hard, but it's not super hard. It still has some enough flex for the shield to be able to bend and move without damaging any of the bonds. So the next thing we're going to do is clean up these edges, and I'll just be using a razor knife for that. Go all the way around and just give it a nice clean look. Finish it up. So now we're just going to take a little bit of pretty fine grit sandpaper. This is 600 grit. I'm going to go all around the edge. I'm going to make sure everything's nice and smooth and clean. Okay, so cool. We've got our shield, right? But it's really not useful yet. We've got the working surface done and matted on our frame, if you will. And now we need a way to hold it and make it ergonomic. So the way I'm going to do that is actually also an improvement on the original design that you might have seen in the viral video. One of the major issues with that shield was that the handles were mounted directly to the plastic shield itself, meaning that because of their close proximity to the back of the lenses, you're clearly able to see the user's hands and of course the handles themselves. So we need to bring that away from it a little bit. I think that would greatly increase the effectiveness of the shield. So here is how I'm gonna do it. This is Lexan, which is the brand name for polycarbonate. It's a clear plastic, the same material that our shield is made out of. It's super durable, shatter resistant, and it doesn't weigh much. 
Now I just picked up this sheet from Home Depot. It's 12 by 24 inches. So in theory, it should be perfect size for our handle without any modifications. Now I wanna do this in the most simple and straightforward way possible. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to bend this in a similar shape to the shield. Now polycarbonate is a really fun material and actually you don't need to heat it to bend it. You can even put this stuff in a bending brake if you want a certain degree angle in it. It's just really easy to work with. So obviously this is the same material that a riot shield is made out of and you can see why they make them out of this because it's super, super durable and it's not going to shatter ever. Okay, so we're going to have this bent something like that. And then probably we're going to have like two inch sections on each side. They're going to be bent at the same concave angle and then that'll be glued in place. And then what I'm planning on doing is just cutting simple slots in here, and that should be a clear, completely invisible feature on the back of our shield, and it'll keep our hands far enough away to hopefully be out of that area of focus. Now it's important now to leave that film on so we can make all of our marks without changing the surface of the polycarbonate itself, so. There's always a way to improvise, right guys? All right, so I ended up just finding like a happy medium, just kind of eyeballed the whole thing and bent it all by hand. And let's say that fits pretty well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out the handles. I probably have one here and one here. So I'll be holding on to this sort of corner section. And I'm going to do all that before taking off this coating. That's the last thing I'm gonna do. Cause I wanna protect as much of the Lexan as I can. The guide broke on my jigsaw and it is impossible to keep anything straight. Oh man. Okay, so our handle piece is pretty much formed. Now you just need to determine where it's gonna lie on the shield itself. Now these holes are along the line of where the old handles used to be. So I think that's what I'm going to use because obviously there was some sort of ergonomic reason why they were there to begin with. So what I'm going to do is just line the handle up as close as I can get to those holes. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be even. All right, so I've got every working clamp I have on this thing right now in order to try to give it a nice, even, smooth, glued surface. Something that looks something like this, where there's no air bubbles or no air pockets, so it really doesn't stand out at all. Another thing I've done is to even out the pressure. I put some steel plates on either side just to give the clamp some more surface area to push against because as this stuff flexes, it's gonna have more pressure wherever the clamps are, of course, and then less, and then more where the next clamp is, but there's gonna be a spot in the middle that's not getting enough. So hopefully that'll remediate that 
and I've got cardboard under here, of course, just to protect the surface of the lenticular lenses. And now, I think all we do is hurry up and wait. And a whole lot of that with this project. So as you can see, it is now daylight outside. This has been drying overnight in the warm house, uh, about 15 hours in total. So I'm confident that that glue is good and set. And now, it's time for one of my favorite parts. All right, so that is our shield completed. Now, I don't expect this to stay clean for a super long time, but hopefully for the time being, it'll be pretty effective. What do you think, Jimmy? Hmm? Whenever you're gonna clean it, be sure to go in line with the lenticles so you'll get down in between all the little valleys and over all those little grooves. So I'm gonna put this thing through its paces. Obviously in an ideal environment like what I just showed you where you have lots of horizontal lines to make it look very convincing, that's not gonna be the case everywhere you go and everywhere you're gonna use it. So I'm gonna try several different scenarios. I'm gonna try indoors, I'm going to try woodland environment, and I'm going to try open space because I'm really curious to see how it reacts with that. Honestly, I'm really impressed with how something made out of nothing more than bits of plastic that you can find online can perform this well. It's really quite amazing. Also, one thing I found when testing it on that little test video I did just a second ago, you have to keep your hands in going in this direction. If you go like this, then you can see obvious fingers because obviously that's a horizontal plane, not a vertical. So if you wanna make it more convincing, go like this. And I'm also wearing dark colored gloves because those sort of hide the obvious skin tone and reflectivity of human skin. All right guys, so that was the invisibility shield. As you can see, this is the real deal. There's no tricks to it, no nothing, and uh, trust, Jimmy, what are you doing? Hmm? 
All right, we've reached the end of the video and now it's time for some final impressions. So this is how I built mine. This was obviously a first attempt with the handle and all that, not the first attempt for the actual screening itself, but you saw how that turned out. But anyway, this is my invisibility shield. I, I actually see quite a few uses for it just in the fun and entertainment world. I mean, if you're a cosplayer, you're an airsofter, or a paintballer even, or you just want to dress up as something extreme for Halloween, I see a lot of applications for this. Now, is it practical? And is it perfect? No, it's not. It's got its flaws, of course, but perfect invisibility still has yet to be seen. This is probably the closest thing that we have currently to passive invisibility. Passive invisibility being that it doesn't require any power. Just the nature of the material itself is enough to sort of cloak an object. So this was pretty effective, I'd say. Now, I really enjoyed doing this, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the final product and, of course, the process and all that. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends because they'll probably get a kick out of it too. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. I enjoy making videos for you guys. This has been an awesome adventure and I really hope to keep the videos coming. So again, if you enjoyed, your support would be greatly appreciated. Oh, and if you enjoyed this, check out some of my other videos. You might enjoy them too. Biggest question now is, do I use my powers for good or for evil? Hmm, leave a comment down below. Oh, and I'm sorry, but I just have one more quick thing. Remember, these are all we need for that effect to happen. These are super, super thin sheets. You mount it on the polycarbonate shield just to make it usable. So, nothing is preventing me from making some sort of folding and visibility shield. I have some ideas, or maybe like a umbrella that comes out, and of course you'd have to orient all the lenticules in the correct direction. But I mean, you could make just about anything with these in mind. So if you wanna see some crazy projects, maybe with these in the future, maybe, no promises, but maybe, then don't forget to subscribe because that helps me out a lot. Anyway, I'll let you go. Bye.